Hello, it's Mark from LightMap, and we're going to light this watch front view in Cinema 4D using the inbuilt physical renderer and HDR Light Studio to create the lighting. So I've got some reference images that we're going to kind of try and create this kind of lighting look. And you can see here, it looks like we've got two really big lights or lighting panels with a gradient of light coming up from that edge. Uh, and the same is kind of mirrored at the bottom here. And as it graduates round, we've got another bit of a hot spot here that we can see reflecting and reflecting in the strap. And then we've got a hot spot here reflecting in the strap at the top as well. So this is the kind of look we're going to go for. And if we look on another image, that's very similar. The kind of two big lights and the black gap in between. Okay. So we're in Cinema 4D with the HDR Light Studio connection panel. We'll create a new lighting project and then we'll press start. Okay, now Cinema 4D's uh, viewport has got ray tracing going on and with the materials we've got set up, it's actually working quite well. So I think what I'll do is we'll actually set up the lighting by light painting directly inside of Cinema 4D's viewport. So what I'll do is I'll turn on the light paint reflection tool. So if we do want to start light painting, that's all ready for us. And then the HDR Light Studio interface layout, we've got our render view just in case we need it. The canvas, the light list, I've tabbed up all of these. So we've got the render view settings, light looks, presets, light properties. We've got the light controls here for scaling and changing the brightness. And then the uh, light preview uh, is up there. I've got the always on top turned on. So when we click back in Cinema 4D, HDR Light Studio is not hidden. So that makes it useful. So always on top is on. Okay. so. My first thought for kind of lighting this is let's just turn down the brightness of the ramp, get a preset light, and we want to replicate those two really big lights that are in front of the watch. So I'll get a soft box. We'll say use this one, and then I'll just drag and drop that on the canvas, and then we'll click on the watch face here and drag the light handle to the bottom of the light so we've got a light um, in front here and uh, that's is positioned by its bottom edge. And then let's scale that to be really big. So we'll go all the way up to a thousand by a thousand. And we can already see an issue here in that with the light really big, it's not actually coming around the corner of these bezels like we had on the image that we're trying to match. So just to see how far we'd need to go. If I make a soft round light and then click on this bezel to position the light and then if I duplicate that and then I click on this bezel here, you can see that this light would need to come all the way around to that light in order to uh, be seen in the bezel. So we can't make a light in the normal sense that would be that big. So what we're going to do is actually use the default gradient background and we're going to edit that to create the lighting effect that we want. So we'll delete these lights, select them all, right click delete. And we can start to work on this gradient background. What I am going to do just as a little test is I'm going to start interactive rendering in just part of the image, say one side of it, just to see how different these two are in terms of how they're reacting to this HDR. Just to check how safe I am to uh, base this off of the, the viewport uh, ray tracing. As you can see, the interactive rendering is actually quite slow. If I go to render, uh, edit render settings, we can change the physical setting to preview to speed it up. Now I would say the difference between those two halves isn't huge. So I'd say we're pretty safe to design the lighting, taking advantage of the ray tracing in the viewport out to the HDRI map. So we'll turn interactive rendering off. 
and this is going to make everything really fast uh, using viewport ray tracing so let's start to edit this gradient so if we go down to the properties and we can see the value ramp let's open up the graph and we're going to do all the work in here so we can double click to create new points so then we'll just drag these around double click again double click drag that up now this view will be somewhat like an srgb view and this gradient here we're looking at is actually linear so in order for what we're seeing in here on this ramp to look correct in this view turn on this button called log um, it basically makes up for the view LUT by uh, having a logarithmic interpretation of this ramp it's hard to explain I just have it on when I'm doing my lighting and I'm trying to get fine control so with it off your darker areas uh, are being lifted as you can see here and then if you turn it on the darker areas are kind of being pulled down which when the look gets applied and they get pulled up again it means this is going to look more correct in the view with log turned on so also let's turn on bezier interpolation and then we get nice smooth interpolation between the points that we put onto here so we'll just start playing by adding points moving points in this graph Now already we're getting quite a nice appearance uh, but it's too dark so let's just up the brightness of this to say 100 or even more 200, 250, 250 looks about right so we've got our nice black line which is a bit too uh, far up the product let's bring that further down And this side's a little bit darker and this side's a little bit brighter uh, and you can see in here this is looking quite nice so I'll make it very slightly brighter say 275 okay so that's great for the base lighting so we'll okay that and let's put uh, a bit of a bright light here soft round light here and up here on the strap which will also uh, create these highlights in the bezels so we're going to create a soft round light and then we'll click on the bezel to move it on the HDRI map we'll change the brightness and then we will scale that up a bit by click and dragging to scale that light up and I'll actually turn on the log on that ramp turn that up a bit and then we'll duplicate that light and we'll click on this bottom bezel and we've got the same effect at the bottom there that is working quite well so we want to control the background of this uh, shot so let's get a preset and pick a light that's quite flat double click to add that to the map now at this point I'm noticing that the HDRI map isn't visible in the background uh, on the live viewport render um, this is probably to do with the way that the shaders are set up and if I turn on interactive rendering you'll see that we do have this white background and if I turn that background off you should be able to see the black line is visible in the background and we don't want that so placing that large square light behind means that now we have a nice white background uh, behind the watch just boost the brightness of that and interestingly now we're rendering this uh, with interactive render 
I think this gradient could do have been a bit brighter because this is still a bit gray here. This should be a nice highlight. So I'm going to use the small plus to take that up by a third of a stop. And I'm going to do that again. So that just went slightly too far. So I'm just going to drag that slider down slightly. That's a great level of exposure. Now the face of this watch, um, you can kind of see the hint of the line uh, going straight across here that's coming from the this, this line here. And I'd like to control that. So I'm going to put a light in front of the face. So if we just make a round soft light, make the blend mode to over, and then we'll adjust the alpha ramp by adding a new point and making that to white. I've reduced the softness of that. And if we change the color to red, and we'll click in the middle of the face to position that light in the front of the watch. Didn't quite get the position there. That's right, that's in the front. And then if we solo it, we can actually see where this light is being reflected. So the idea is we're gonna make this light black. We wanna make sure we don't make it too big and influence the reflections in the rest of the watch too much. But we're gonna use this to control not getting this black line across the face of the watch. Okay, so that size is great. So if I make the brightness zero, it doesn't matter what color it is, it will still be a black light now. And then if I unsolo that, that's great. So if we do a before and after, you can see this is with the light, the black light in the front. And then if we turn that off, you can see how that all gets a bit washed out. And then we've got that black line down the middle. So it is going to look better with this black light in the front. And then to bring a bit of form into the hands and reflecting in the glass, we'll go and get another preset light and add it to the lighting design. So we'll say get, let's say get this tracing paper light here and we'll just drag that onto the design. But then we'll click on the watch face here to move it to there. And then we'll scale it down so it fits within this black area and then we'll solo it so we can see its effect on the face and the glass. Okay, so I'm going to turn up the brightness of this light and reposition it by clicking on the watch face here. and then scale it down a little bit. Turn the brightness up. So I'm just using this light to make the face and the, the hands and the numbers look a bit more interesting. I manually move it on the canvas now and see if I can find an even better position for it. That's looking quite good. If I solo that light, we can see it's creating some interest in the glass. It's reflecting in the numbers uh, and the hands. Some of these then are getting some nice highlights from the little beveled edges. So it's kind of bringing some life to that face. So I'm, I'm happy with that. So if I then unsolo that, That's the overall effect. I'll turn it down in brightness very slightly. And then where we've got this line coming across and we've got this on this knurled um, Turner dial here, it'd be nice to control the highlight on the edge of this a bit. So I'm going to get another light 
and I'll drag and drop that on there onto the canvas and then we'll just click on here to move that to reflect there and then if I solo that we can see that light is actually reflecting in the bezel and we don't want that to break up uh, the nice lighting we've already got so if I move this around a little bit on the canvas we've actually got that in quite a nice position now so if I scale up the height a little bit maybe scale the width a bit increase the brightness we've picked up some nice little highlights on the edge there and if I unsolo that light I'll turn down the brightness a little bit but I'm now pretty happy with the lighting uh, on this shot. So to finish off, I'm going to press the render button, browse to the location of this um, project. I'll call this um, lighting front. Save that at 3000 pixel HDRI map and we'll render that out now. Okay, so now that's rendered, the Cinema 4D scene is just using standard lighting created by us and we can stop HDR Light Studio. We can stop the interactive region render. And we can just go to the render settings and set it up for our final render. So we'll do a 3K render. We'll go to the physical settings and we'll change them to medium and we can now render the final uh, shot to the picture viewer okay so the render is finished now and that's the final result which looks absolutely great so I think it shows you can do some really cool stuff with the inbuilt renderer inside of Cinema 4D with HDR Light Studio. And to top it off, the real time feedback in the viewport with the ray tracing meant that it was such a super fast workflow. So you can download this model, you can follow along, try out the techniques you saw in this video, and uh, just go to the Lightmap website and uh, take a trial of HDR Light Studio. Okay, thanks for watching, bye.